or do what one of our great scholars did when he was asked questions and say, I don't know. But in the case of this question, maybe I'll take a stab at it. I too, as I said earlier, was raised as a Christian. I was a Catholic. I was an altar boy. Okay? I ate the hosts that they put on our tongue. And it is not our intent to attack you as a Christian, as a believing, practicing Christian, or anyone who espouses that faith. But Allah has commanded us to cast the truth at falsehood. We have a, a right to Jesus as much as you have a right to Jesus. Because we believe in him as a prophet of God. We believe in him as he saw himself, the son of man. He never ever claimed to be. Nowhere in the New Testament did he call himself God. In the Quran, Allah has cleared this up very eloquently. In a few words, he said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say, he is Allah. The one and only. Allahu Samad, the eternal, absolute, and self subsisting. Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad. He has no sons, nor is he the son of anyone. Wa Lam Yakullahu Kufuan Ahad. And there is none that can compare with him. This chapter of the Quran is called Al-Ikhlas or the purity of faith and the foundation of Islam unlike the foundation of Christianity because we don't worship Muhammad may the peace and blessing be upon him we emulate him we try to be like him and we love all of the prophets of, and messengers of God but we we build our foundation on the very teaching that Moses and Abraham and Noah and Jesus and Muhammad taught. Let there be no God but God. La ilaha illallah. There is no one worthy of worship except Allah. You see, Jesus did not pray to himself. He prayed to the God, to the creator of the heavens and the earth. The same one that we pray to. We call him in the Arabic language, Allah. In the Aramaic, we know that he was called, according to the scriptural story, when he was supposedly on the cross, he called out to God, Ila, Ila, Lama Sabachthani, my God, my God, Ila, Ila, Lama Sabachthani, Allah, Allah. When you go to the Christian Arab lands and you read their Bible, you will find it written in Arabic when they refer to God, Allah. So our foundation is very different. And in order to, when you have to remodel a house or build a house, a new house, the first thing you have to do is build a foundation. If the foundation of your house is leaning or slanted, or if it's sinking, you have to build it up. You may love that house. This house you may have spent your lifelong earnings on, and you don't want to move out of it. But before it sinks too far to the point where it will become uninhabitable, you won't be able to live there, you have to correct the foundation. And there's nothing wrong with correcting the foundation so that you continue, can continue to live in that house. Again, we mean no harm or disrespect to you as a person, but Almighty God Allah, He is the Lord over all of the creation and his right is that he be worshipped alone without any partners. That he be worshipped alone without any partners. Thank you. Sister section, inshallah, do we have a question from the sister section? Asalaamu As Alaikum. My name is Samreen. I'm a student. My question is, in Christianity, Joseph plays a role of a father, of Jesus or a guardian, I'm not sure. What does he play a role in Islam? 
Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for your question. According to the best of my understanding, Yusuf really is not spoken up of in the Quran or in the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salam. And Allah knows best. We have sheikhs and scholars who are with us that could better answer that question. But according to my understanding, he has a very, very limited or minimal role at all from the text of Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet That's why Isa is not called Isa ibn Yusuf, he's called Isa ibn Maryam. So whether Joseph was or played an influential role in his upbringing, Allah knows best. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Muhammad Rizwan. This question is, this question is uh, not of mine. This is my uh, Christian friend's question who is here. His question is, uh, what is wrong uh, if he doesn't follow Islam? What is wrong if he doesn't follow Islam? Yeah. I'll tell you what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told all of us. That whoever, whoever dies, having heard the message of Islam and not accepting that message, that they will be in the fire. What could be more wrong than having a terrible, horrible destination than the hellfire? We invite you to consider, your friend, I invite you to consider your belief and the foundation upon which it is built and be open and receptive to truth from wherever it comes. Examine Islam and its texts. Don't judge the religion by its people necessarily unless you know someone, a Muslim, to be practicing his faith, his religion, in the best manner. But study Islam, question it. We, we don't mind your questions. But what would be wrong for, if you were my friend, and if I wanted you to stay as my friend, I want to keep you as my friend, and I want for you what I want for myself, I'd want you to become a Muslim, because I wouldn't want you to go to the fire. The greatest sin, and there's a lot of sin in the world. I mean, you, you, you name it. We could go down a long laundry list of sin and wrongdoing and corruption and evil. But the biggest of all sins is to associate gods, other gods, with Allah. Usurp or to take the right of Allah to be worshipped and to give it to his creation. And we just heard tonight the words of Almighty God telling us that Jesus was a creation of Allah. That he was a word breathed into Maryam. So when we worship him, we are actually taking the worship that is due to Allah and giving it to his creation. And Allah SWT, from your own theology, you know that God is a jealous God. Thank you.